certainly want to say praise the Lord to everybody. Uh, we give thanks unto the Lord for he is good and his mercy endureth forever. I would, if I were to sing a song, I would sing a song that says, I don't feel no ways tired. Amen. We've come too far to give up now. So we want to uh, certainly uh, go before the Lord in prayer. And we want to thank and praise the Lord for his goodness and his mercy, his love that he has shown toward us. And as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, if anybody has a particular prayer request, uh, you can let it be known at this particular time. Amen. So certainly uh, pray for the success of the service on today. Uh, pray that the Lord uh, will have his way that something be said or done to inspire us, to encourage our hearts. Uh, one thing that's important for every butt block believer and even uh, people seeking the Lord that, that are unsaved, they, that we, all need, we all need some encouragement from the Lord. We all need the Lord to help us with our faith. And so we want to pray uh, that the Lord will encourage us to, to strengthen our faith and to uh, help us as we move on through this particular period, this pandemic. And we want to pray for those that need healing in their bodies. The Lord is a healer. The Lord is a deliverer. He still is sitting on the throne. And we want to pray for our church, uh, pray for our mission, and pray for our, our vision of our church, uh, that the Lord will bless us and keep us moving forward. Our vision is to be a caring fellowship, leading souls to Christ, strengthening members, and families and making disciples, equipping them for service and community ministry. So we want to pray for that. Pray that the manifestation of that happens. Amen. And then also uh, pray for our purpose and Christian ministries is in existence to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ through effective and responsible ministry and uh, through di intentional, dynamic, and creative fellowship. And we want to uh, certainly uphold our purpose, and that is to put out that gospel, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, because it is the power of God, the power of God unto salvation. Amen. So let every heart pray. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we certainly do thank and praise the Lord for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for how you blessed us and allowed us to come together one more time to hear of your word, to fellowship with you. We ask you, Lord, that you continue to bless our hearts and our minds. Give us what we need, Lord, in this hour and this time in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Lord, that you bind every evil spirit, every demonic power that would come to hinder. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. We cast it down, every stronghold, every high thing that it would exalt itself against the knowledge of God. And we bind the spirit of fear in the name of Jesus. And we release the spirit of courage and strength and power and might. And Lord, let your word have its free course on tonight. Let it heal us. Let it deliver us. Let it strengthen our spirit, our soul, and our body. Feed us, hallelujah, until we want no more. Father, we thank you and praise you. Give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And uh, we certainly... Uh, once again, do thank and praise God. We praise God for how good he is to each and every one of us and the ways that he has made for us. Amen. Uh, if I were to sing another song, it would be he keeps on making a way. Amen. The Lord keeps on making a way. And tonight, uh, I want you to turn with me uh, to Acts chapter number five. Acts chapter number five, and our subject uh, for today, I want to talk uh, to you all about continuing in the face of opposition, continuing in the face of opposition, and it's important, it's important uh, for people to continue, amen, to continue in the face of opposition. The Bible says, if you faint in adversity, your strength is small. If you faint in adversity, your strength is small. 
And the thing about opposition is we all are going to have some opposition against something. No matter um, uh, if you come out of one test, you're going to go into another test. If you go out of that test, you're going to have a, another test. So, and sometimes you have two or three tests <laughs> all at the same time. Thank you, Lord. So there's always going to be some opposition. And the Lord does not want us to faint in the day of adversity. He doesn't want us to uh, uh, fall by the wayside when we're facing opposition. It's important to continue on. It's important to keep moving. It's important to, to stay strong and to keep your focus, especially when opposition comes. When opposition comes, um, people, people uh, get distracted because of the opposition. And they, when you get distracted because of the opposition, uh, it causes one to lose focus. And the Bible says without a vision or without focus, the people perish. So you don't ever want to give up on um, what uh, you're called to do, what the Lord has in store for you. Amen? So, uh, in the book of uh, Acts, chapter number 5. Acts, chapter number 5. Continuing in the face of opposition. So, Acts, chapter number 5. And I want to begin reading. I want to begin reading at uh, uh, verse number 12. Acts, chapter number 5. I want to begin reading at verse number 12. 12. And this particular uh, uh, chapter, we actually uh, preached on um, on Sunday, but it, it keeps, it keeps uh, tugging at me, I should say, in my spirit. Um, and there's uh, another dynamic uh, that the Lord wants us to bring out. The, the, the word of the Lord is always revealing. And no matter how often you go over the word of the Lord, uh, he can always show you something because the, the word of the Lord is alive. So Acts chapter number 5 and verse number 12 says, And by the hands of the apostles, there were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And... Of the rest does no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. And the believers were the more added to the Lord, uh, multitudes, both men and women. Insomuch that they brought, uh, forth six, uh, sick, brought forth the sick into the streets, and laid them on the beds and couches uh, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. And the Bible says, verse number 16, and there came also a multitude of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folk and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, every one. And what I want to bring out, I read uh, quite a bit there, uh, which normally I don't normally do, but I want to gather a thought in your mind. I want you to see that, that, that the, the beginning church, the church when it started, um, it was a church that was dynamic. It was dynamic because of its fellowship, and it was dynamic because they were on one accord. They had fellowship with the Lord, and they were all with one accord. And it uh, doesn't mean that they didn't have problems, they didn't have uh, uh, issues, because they did. They had some issues, they had some problems, and, but they, they stayed focused to what the Lord had called them to do. And because they stayed focused to what the Lord had called them to do, revival just broke out. It just broke out uh, everywhere they went. Uh, when they stayed focused and not got distracted by the things that were going on around them, 
Uh, they had problems within, they had problems without, but as long as they stayed focused, uh, the Lord, the Bible says, added to the church daily such as should be saved. And they were able then also to perform uh, great multitudes of miracles, signs, and wonders. Look at, look at what they said. They said, uh, and by the hands of the apostles, uh, there were many signs and wonders uh, wrought among the people. Because that's verse number 12. Because they were, they were all with one accord and they were all focused. And notice, um, uh, and you drop down to verse 14. And believers were more added because they, they continued their focus. They continued to stay on one accord. And, it, uh, and the believers were more added uh, to the Lord, multitudes, both men and women, insomuch that they brought their sick folks, they brought sick people into the streets. They had enough faith to believe that, that God would move in the midst. So they brought their sick folk into the, into the midst. Look at that kind of faith. When, when, when the people of God stay focused, it increases other people's faith. Because the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing and that by the word of God. Testimonies are important. Hallelujah. And, and when, 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 when people are focused on the plan of God, God is able to move in the midst and people get healed. People get delivered. People get set free. Notice what it says. In so much that they brought the sick folk into the streets uh, and laid them on beds and couches. Can you imagine? Just think in your, your righteous mind. People just uh, uh, lining up out in the street in their bed and their couches. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Sick folk uh, uh, coming out in their bed and their couches and at least that the shadow of Peter, amen, passing by would heal them. Thank you, Lord. So that takes a lot of faith. That takes some believing and trusting in God because the people were focused on what God had planned for them. And, that's, and, they, and they kept that focus so they were able to perform great miracles, signs, and wonders. Thank you, Lord. Now notice what it says. He says, uh, Peter passing by uh, and by might uh, overshadow them and uh, basically to be healed. Verse 16, and there also came out of the city around about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them that were what? Vexed with unclean spirits. Thank you, Lord. And they were what? Healed. Now notice what it says. Everyone, everybody got a healing. It wasn't like some didn't get a healing, but everybody got healed that were in their midst. Why? Because they were focused on what God had, had, had commissioned them to do. Anytime that you stay focused on the things that God has commissioned you to do, you're going to have success. You're going to have success. People are going to be delivered. People are going to be set free. And that brings me to my point um, that I want to talk about tonight. Uh, continuing in the face of opposition. And, and like I said earlier, the early, the early church, it was really a dynamic church because their, their faith was rooted and grounded in Jesus Christ. If you're going to uh, overcome opposition, your faith has to be rooted and grounded in Jesus. It has to be rooted and grounded in Jesus. And then your, 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 your faith and, and those who you're working with, you have to be on one accord. The reason why the apostles were uh, actually able to do the things that God had called them to do is because they were on one accord. They didn't allow themselves to get distracted by the things that were going on around them. And, and it's like uh, even, uh, even on today, today, what's going on today, a lot of people 
are, are being distracted by the, this coronavirus and uh, hearing about it, it, it attacks the faith. And when people uh, over expose themselves to it, uh, what happens? Fear sets in, doubt sets in, and that, and that can take you off of your mission with God. That can take you out of step with God. So, you know, um, I'm going to say it like this. God, the Lord, the Lord revealed this to me, that uh, whatever we focus on, we manifest. If I focus on the Lord, I'll manifest the Lord in my life. If I focus on fear and anxiety, I'll manifest fear and anxiety in my life. If I, if I focus on the Lord and fear and anxiety, I'll, I'll be double-minded. Uh, that, that will be manifest in my life. I'll be sometimes faithful and I'll be uh, sometimes fearful. You know, so whatever you uh, put your mind to or whatever you focus on the most, that's what's going to manifest in your life. And, you know, I'm going to just say this. I can notice even for myself, some myself, even some changes uh, in, in, in my life because I've been, uh, uh, the Lord had dropped this message in my mind and I have been really, uh, focused on the Lord and turning my heart to the Lord and and getting and drawing closer and closer to Him. That that even um, I find myself I was uh, driving in my car and sometimes I listen to uh, that uh, uh, Leecom uh, radio station, you know. And and as I as I'm now when I'm driving in the car just for background music, I'm riding trying to get where I'm going. Now, when I turn that on, that Lee Calm music, it vexes my spirit. Well, and I, I turn it off and I put it on something else. Why? Because as I'm drawing closer to the Lord, I'm getting more spiritual. And my desires are becoming more spiritual. When you draw closer to the Lord, you don't want to operate in the flesh. You want to operate in the spirit. Amen? Amen. And, and those things that are fleshly, they, they become undesirable to you. Why? Because you're drawing closer to the Lord. And, and, and I'm setting that atmosphere within myself, in my mind, because, uh, 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 and, and that, has, that has a residual effect. Whatever you yield your members to obey, that's whose servant you are to whom you obey, whether unto a righteousness or unto unrighteousness. So when you're yielding yourself to the Lord, it, he, he flushes all of those uh, 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 carnal desires out of you. Because why? Because you're focused on him. But if you feed the flesh, you're going to desire more of the flesh. Amen? Now, just hold that uh, chapter there. We're going to, uh, I want you to go with me. Hallelujah. I feel my help coming. Uh, go with me. Over to the book of uh, Galatians. Galatians chapter uh, number six. Galatians, I'm sorry, Galatians chapter number five. Galatians chapter number five. Amen? Uh, and drop down with me to verse number 16. Verse number 16. Galatians chapter number five, verse number 16. And notice what he says. He says, uh, this I say then, walk in the spirit. You want to give yourself to more to the spirit. Amen. You want to walk in the spirit. Hallelujah. And you got to learn how to walk in the spirit. Thank you, Lord. In other words, that really means be led by the Holy Ghost. Do those things that are spiritual. Though we are, are, are if you allow me to say it this way, though we are uh, 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 I don't want. Let's see. I, there's a. I don't want you to get me wrong when I say this. Uh, uh, we're. Uh, thank you, Lord. The Lord's helping me with my words. Uh, we are in a body, Amen. But but we should be. Uh, but we have to realize this body houses our spirit, and we ought to be more spiritual 
than, than, than natural, if you allow me to say it that way. We ought to realize that uh, uh, in, in my mind, in my spirit, I'm seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. That, that, I'm, a, that I'm a spiritual being having a natural experience. And in order to be legally down here on this earth, you have to, to operate, you have to have a body. Amen? A spirit has to have a body to legally operate here on this earth. Amen? So, 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 but what I'm trying to get you to see is, is that you should be thinking more spiritual than you are natural. Your first reaction to anything that happens to you should be a spiritual reaction as opposed to a natural reaction. That's why the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The first thing you should seek is God's kingdom. Why? Because you're spiritual. Amen? Hallelujah. Some people use prayer as the last resort, but prayer should be the first resort. Amen? Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. So, so, so we have to realize, because the Bible says, set your affections on things above, not on things of this earth. So you should be thinking more spiritual than you do carnal, if you allow me to say that, or, or natural. Thank you, Lord. And, and know that you're, what you are experiencing, you should put the spirit first. Uh, what I mean by that is, is that when things happen to you, you should pray. You should seek what God says about it. When, 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 when you want to well, live your life, you've got to find out what thus saith the Lord. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? Every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Why does he say that? Because you are spiritual. And, and God wants to feed your spirit. Uh, Paul said it this way. He said the, the outward man, hallelujah, it should be dying. But the inward man, your spirit man, should be renewed day by day. Uh, and how do you renew it? By walking in the spirit and not in the flesh. So let's, let's look at it. What does it say? Uh, verse 15. Uh, no, 16. Uh, Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16. Notice what it says. He says, this I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not what? Fulfill the evil desires of the flesh. And that's what I meant earlier. That when you draw nigh to God and God draws nigh to you, those things that you used to do, that, 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 that you... Uh, uh, I'm going to say it this way. Those things that are carnal related, they become unattractive to you. Uh, your, your appetite changes. Why? Because you're getting more spiritual. When I said that about me listening to the Lee Calm station and, and, you know, just having it on as background music, that, that my spirit picks that up. And, and listening to those, that music, um, uh, I ain't saying that there's any sin in it. I'm not talking about that, but I'm talking about what my spirit desires. It, it doesn't desire that. Amen. And it, and it wants something more pure. It wants something more holy. It wants something more spiritual. The appetite changes. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, so we see here, um, he says, for, for this I say, walk, that word walk means to live. Live in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill or carry out the, the lust or the evil desires of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary one to another. These are contrary uh, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. And notice what it says. But if ye be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. The law, what law is he talking about? A carnal law, the law of sin and death. Now notice, he said, then he goes into, he says, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, 
idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, uh, wrath, strife, seditions, uh, hearsays, uh, and then uh, verse 21, my God, that's a lot of stuff, ain't it? <laughs> he said, envies, murders, drunken, revelings, and such like. Of, notice what he says, of the which I tell you before, as I have also uh, do such thing, oh, as I have, uh, hold on, as I also told you in the past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So what is he saying? He's saying this, that um, we're talking about distractions. We're talking about oppositions. Um, we have some built-in oppositions. Envy, jealousy, uh, wrath, all those works of the flesh. Those things are in us. And if you say that these things are not in you, you are lying. Amen? Because we're all born of the same thing. Amen? All, all, all born in sin and shaping in iniquity. So, so, so the first opposition you really got to overcome is yourself. Amen? And how do you overcome those things which he's listed? It's you got to walk in the spirit. Amen? You got to walk in the spirit to overcome the works of the flesh when he's just laid out there. And, and, and uh, I want to say it like this, because I'm going to say it to you the way the Lord showed it to me. It was uh, when he was dealing with my mind about this, is that, you know, don't think it's strange that these things are, are, are trying to operate in you. Uh, don't, don't think that, uh, how can I say it? Don't think that uh, 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 you're so super hyper spiritual that these things can't manifest in your life. And the only reason why they're not manifesting if they're not manifesting is because you have been walking in the spirit. Amen? Hallelujah. So, so it's not of your own will. It's not on, of your own volition. That, that, that these things aren't manifesting in your life, it's because you're operating in the spirit and not in the flesh. That's the reason why. And if you stop operating in the, in the spirit and, and start operating in the flesh, it's going to manifest. Amen? Because it's in you. Huh? You follow what I'm saying? Thank you, Lord. So, so that's opposition. So if, if you want to uh, 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 be able to overcome opposition to continue with the plan of God, you've got to walk in the spirit because your flesh is against the plan of God. Notice what he said um, in, that, in that verse. My God, I ain't going to spend all this time on this. this must, somebody must need to hear this. <laughs> uh, uh, notice what he said, verse 21. He says, Endings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Now, uh, uh, we've all done stuff like that. Notice what he says. He says, of the which I tell you before, as I also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So, so if I don't overcome that opposition, I can't inherit the kingdom of God. I've got to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. I gotta, I gotta realize I'm more spiritual than I am uh, natural. Hallelujah. Because when Jesus reconciled us, he reconciled us into a spiritual kingdom. And therefore, for me to uh, uh, receive what I need from God, I have to be spiritual. Uh, because why? God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen? Hallelujah. Now notice, then, what is he saying? Verse 22, he says, but the fruit of the spirit is love and joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. 
And, and, and notice, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh. Why? How you crucified the flesh? By walking in the spirit with the affections and lust, meaning evil desires. Because that's what, uh, uh, that's what causes the, 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 the works of the flesh to operate in people is evil desires. Now, let's go back. Hallelujah. Let's go back over to, to, to the book of Acts. Now notice, we're talking about the, the early church. The early church was a dynamic church. And that church, the people, they were in fellowship with Jesus. And then they were uh, with one accord, working with one another. But uh, they still had problems. They still had issues. They still had fights. But what caused them to refrain from getting into the fights and, 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 and being swayed by the issues, they stayed focused on what they were called to do. What they were called to do. Now notice, uh, drop down with me. Uh, Acts chapter number 5. And then um, verse 17. Acts chapter number 5, verse 17. And you would, uh, the church was going on strong. The church was going on smooth. But notice verse 17. Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with them, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were all filled with indignation. In other words, they were mad. Amen. Why? Because the disciples was healing. The disciples were delivering. They got upset. They got mad. And notice what they did. They laid their hands on them, on the apostles, and put them in the common prison. Amen. So they, so they, so the, so the religious leaders got upset with them and put them in, put them in jail. And and other instances, they beat them. And put them in jail. So what I'm saying is, is that anytime that you desire and to seek to do good, you're going to face opposition. You're going to face, not everybody is going to be happy with you. And not everybody is going to be pleased with you. And, and some people are going to do things to start to block you and stop you from moving forward. Amen? Hallelujah. It's like, it's like once again, like, like this coronavirus, this, this, this pandemic that, that is going on. Some people are, are going to give more power to it than they do the word of God. And it's gonna, it's, they're going to focus more on it, which produces fear, which, which stifles the faith, that when it comes time for them to move, uh, to come back to church, uh, to do anything spiritual, they're going to be weak. They're not going to be able to come. Why? Because they, they, they allow uh, the, 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 what they've heard, they've allowed uh, 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 fear to set in their mind. The enemy gets in there. And, and, and messes with your mind, telling you you can't do it, that you're going to die, that everybody else around you is going to die. Thank you, Lord, that that, that, that that fear will set in. But the only way to overcome fear is faith. The only way to overcome fear is faith. Faith cometh by what? Hearing, and that by the word of God. And that by the word of God. So, what I, I'm, I'm calling uh, those, those things that try to stop us from moving forward in, in the will of God, from moving forward in the plan of God, I call that opposition resistance. Thank you, Lord, because, because that, that, that opposition is giving you some resistance that is trying to block you and stop you and take you off. One of the things that the enemy uh, does, and he does it faithfully, he knows how to distract. He knows how. He knows how to use his wiles and his trickery to distract you. Uh, that's why Jesus said, I 
will keep me in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. And the enemy knows that. So he tries to get your mind off of Jesus and put it on the corona. He tries to get your mind off of Jesus and, and get it on all your bills that's stacking up. Uh, 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 and the food supply seems to be drying up. But it, he don't put your mind on the fact that God said that, that, that he will never leave you nor forsake you. He doesn't put your mind on the fact with, that God said, I shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He don't put your mind on the fact that, 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 that if even if you did come down with the corona, that by uh, his stripes, you are healed. You are delivered. Hallelujah. And, and that's what the scripture means when we says we've got to walk by faith and not by sight. Don't allow distractions and oppositions that are trying to overcome you to bring you down. Whether they're fights from without or fights from within the church or fights in the community, don't allow those things to tear you down. Or fights from within. Hallelujah. When I say within, within your own flesh, within your own body. You've got to remain what the scripture says, steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your what? Your labor is not in vain. But the enemy, thank you, Lord, if we give our minds and our attention to what the enemy is doing, it's going to distract us and he's going to manifest his will in our lives. But if we, on the other hand, give our hearts and our minds to what God, what God wants us to do. Thank you, Lord. And when we um, think about those things, those things are going to manifest in our life. And I'm sure if I would ask anybody, hallelujah, here today, thank you, Lord. What do you want manifested in your life? I'm sure you're going to say the will of God. And in order to do that, you've got to give your heart and then your mind unto the things that be of God and keep moving toward that plan and that purpose for which God has called you for. Hallelujah. Y'all with me here today? Thank you, Lord. Now, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me kind of uh, move on here. So, so that opposition resistance uh, you know, those are threats. And, you know, you got bullies out there that want to threaten you. Tell you if you, if you go to church, you're going to die. Huh? They, <laughs> they threaten you. If you do such and such, we're going to get you. And, and that's what they told the apostles. Uh, when, they, when, they, uh, uh, when, when they caught them, they had threw them in jail. Thank you. Let's, let's look at it. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Verse, verse, uh, verse 18. And they laid their hands on the apostles and they put them in the common prison. Now notice, look at God. Verse 19. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors. Huh? The angel of God. God sent them some help. Why? Because they were focused on the things that be of God. If you keep your heart focused on the things that be of God, God is going to send you some help. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now notice. Uh, uh, what verse? Oh, verse 19. But the angel of the Lord, but the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And notice, verse 21, and when they heard that they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. Now notice, the, the, the angel of the Lord came to them and helped them. And, and when the angel came to help them, it wasn't for them to run away, it was for them to continue in the path that God has set for them. When, when God sends you help, that help 
is meant to help you to endure what you're going through so that you can continue in the purpose and the plan of God. Thank you, Lord. Don't run away from the enemy. Uh, don't run, don't, don't allow this coronavirus to, to, to shriek your courage so that it can stop your life from operating. Nothing that, that comes into this world. Nothing. I'm saying again. How I feel like Paul when he told him that if any man preach another gospel than what I preached unto you, let him be accursed. He said it twice for emphasis. And I'm going to say this twice for emphasis. Don't allow anything in this world to stop you from doing what thus saith the Lord. Don't allow it to take your courage. Don't allow it to take your strength. Don't allow it to cause you to be dismayed. Why? Because it's not the will of God. Uh, that's why the scripture says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I believe that this coronavirus is man-made as a weapon to stop uh, 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 people in their tracks from advancing in the purpose and the plan of God. But well, we have to realize that no, nothing, no, I was going to say no thing, <laughs> hallelujah, nothing should be able to separate you or to stop you from serving the Lord. And then some of us want to hinge on the, on, on the sideline and say, yeah, well, you know, I hear what you're saying, pastor, but I got to be safe. I got to, I got to, I got to be safe. And I'm going to say, yeah, yeah, you got to be safe. But Jesus said, if you seek to save your life, uh, you'll lose it. But if you lose your life for, for his sake, you'll save it. Thank you, Lord. And, and by why you tried to be safe, you can correct, catch this thing anywhere. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My God. Hallelujah. My God. Somebody can bring it to your house. You ain't, you ain't got to go outside and get it. Thank you, Lord. It's, it's, it, but we, we continue because of the grace of God. Amen. We continue because of having our faith in God. Hallelujah. Because why? If God be for you, then who then can be against you? Hallelujah. So, so we got to continue to build ourselves up and encourage ourselves and upon our most holy faith. Praying. You got to pray. Thank you, Lord, to keep your faith up. You got to read God's word. You got to read God's word to keep your faith up. You got to know that you've been bought with a price, that, that you are not your own, that, that God is on your side, and God has a purpose and a plan for your life. So therefore, whatever it takes, I'm going to do what thus saith the Lord. That's the kind of mindset you got to live with. You can't live your life in fear. You can't live your life in anxiety. Why? Because those things are against God. God, God. God doesn't want you to live your life in fear. God doesn't want you to live your life in anxiety. But I tell you who does? That's the enemy. The devil wants to block you and stop you from doing what God has planned for you. So when, when you have your mind focused that I'm going to do what God told me to do, God will send you some help. Like he sent them brothers, that them angels, to open up prison. And then the angel told them, go into the synagogue and teach. Thank you, Lord. Continue on the path that, that I've set you on. You got to continue on the path that God has set us on. Hallelujah. Don't let opposition define, uh, uh, my God, Ooh, I got to say that differently. Uh, opposition should define who you are. Opposition should define whose you are. Amen? Uh, you got to declare whose side you're on. Amen? Are you on the Lord's side? Hallelujah. And opposition has a way of bringing that out. Hallelujah. If you're on the Lord's side, you'll continue to do what he says do. If you're weak, and you're uh, on the enemy's side, you'll do what the enemy says do. Hallelujah. You got to uh, uh, let your mind, thank you, Lord, uh, be focused on the Lord. Now, I want to say this. Thank you, Lord. I want to drop down then uh, to verse 41. I want to drop down to verse 41. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. 
Notice verse 41. It says, it says this. Hold on. Let me drop. Let me see this thing get gooder. <laughs> uh, verse 38. Um, verse 38. They had found them brothers preaching, preaching in the uh, synagogue, and then they had threatened them. See, bullies, they want to threaten you. Amen. To stop you from doing what God had told you to do. And verse 37, they said, I mean, verse 38, they said, and now I say unto you, this is Gamal. He says, refrain from these men and let them alone if this counsel or this work be of men, it shall come to naught. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it. Least happily ye be found even to fight against God. This Gamal gave them counsel, told the, the priest to leave the, the brethren alone, came to their aid and their rescue. But verse 39, it says, uh, uh, verse 40, it says, and they agreed, talking about the priests. And when they had called the apostles and beaten them, <laughs> thank you, Lord, they beat them. When they called them and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus, and they let them go. So they, 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 they had the opposition. The opposition beat them and threatened them. Amen? And then they let them go. Notice Notice with Peter, Peter, and they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they should be counted worthy to suffer for his name. And daily in the temple, in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Now, I want to say this, that that's beautiful. Verse, verses, those, those two verses there, verse 41 and 42. After they had been threatened, after they had been beaten, they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. And what makes that so outstanding is this, is that they were doing good and they, people were getting healed. People were getting saved and they got beat. They got thrown in prison. They got, uh, uh, in other words, shamed. And yet, they didn't get disappointed. They didn't throw in the towel. They didn't murmur and complain. They maintained a positive attitude. Your attitude determines your altitude with God. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord deliver us out of them all. When, when, I'm going to say it this way. When bad things happen to you, bad things happen to everybody. But those that got a relationship with the Lord, they don't, they don't blame God. They, they do what the Lord said to rejoice, be thankful. Amen? Be thankful that God has allowed you to go through it and he's brought you out on the other side. Be thankful that, 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 that God is great and he's greatly to be praised and that he will give you peace. He will give you joy. He will give you strength. That, that be thankful because what you're going through, God is going to use that 
as a testimony to help somebody else. Thank you, Lord, that, that every test and every trial that we go through, it's purposeful. It has meaning. Thank you, Lord. And, and uh, God, he says he allows the sun to, uh, uh, to shine on the just and the unjust. God allows rain to come on the saved and the unsaved. Thank you, Lord. But what's, what's, what's powerful is the fact that God is our helper. God is our strength. God is our shield and our buckler that he will help us through whatever we're going through. Thank you, Lord. So, so what are you saying, Brother Pastor? That, that, that whatever you're going through should not stop you from advancing yourself and sticking to the plan that God has called you to do. Thank you, Lord. And, and I want to say it like this. That sometimes, yeah, we take breaks. I get, I get married, we go on a honeymoon. You know, they, at work, they give you some vacation. Amen? Uh, some people die, you grieve. Amen? But there, there, there's an end time to that. Amen? There's an end time to a honeymoon. Amen? There's an end time to grieving. Amen? Hallelujah. There's an end time to, to, to vacations. Huh? And, and you got to get back on track. Hallelujah. Yeah, uh, yeah, we're human. We experience things in life. Uh, when this corona thing first hit, I remember uh, uh, it was uh, on a Wednesday. And I was supposed to teach Bible class. I could have went on Facebook and taught the Bible class, but my mind wasn't right. Thank you, Lord. My mind wasn't thinking right. And I'm trying to figure all this stuff out. Hallelujah. But, but, but the next week, God, between that time, God had done something with my mind so I can get back up and do what I need to do. Amen. Get, continue on what God has called me to do. So the same way, that, that, that equals out in anything in life. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're experiencing, uh, don't allow those experiences, don't allow what you're going through to stop you and distract you from the purpose and the plan of God. The Bible says a righteous man falleth down seven times, but he gets back up. You got to get back up again. You got to dust yourself off and, and stay in tune and stay in focus with God. Hallelujah, my God. So we see here then. So, so, so in order, uh, I love it what these brethren did. When they departed from the presence of the council, they rejoiced. Amen? So, so when you're facing opposition, you've got to find something to give thank God thanks for. You've got to find something to rejoice. Amen? Rejoicing in God or rejoicing in the Lord is a weapon of warfare. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm going to say that again. Rejoicing in the Lord is a weapon of warfare. That's why the Bible commands us to rejoice when we're facing persecution. Uh, not, not to have a pity party. Uh, that, and don't get me wrong. Some things uh, hit you and they'll stun you. And yeah, you may get the blues. You may feel down and out and sad. But there is a time to mourn. And there's a time to rejoice. Amen? There's a time to be angry. There's a time to refrain from angry, being angry. Everything under heaven uh, there's a time and a season. Thank you, Lord. So, so when those things hit you, you've got to get back to your righteous mind and fight that thing on a spiritual level because all it is is opposition to try to stop you from doing what God has intended for you to do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So notice then. Also, I said it also, but I want to bring this out as another point, that those brethren, they maintained a positive attitude. Anytime 
you're facing opposition, you've got to maintain a positive attitude. And the only way to maintain a positive attitude is to not allow your mind to go down negative road street. Thank you, Lord. You can't, you can't live in uh, 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 2030 a negative road street. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You can't let that be your house. Hallelujah. You can't park your mind, hallelujah, on, on, on negative island. If you, you, you park your mind on negative island, you'll be stranded and die on negative island. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you've got, to, you've got to get in your rowboat and row over to positive island and, and allow your mind and your thoughts to rest in positive island. Uh, Paul brings that thing out beautifully in the book of Philippians. Uh, it tells you, uh, think on things that are lovely. Think of things that are positive. Think of things that are true. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. You've got to think on those kind of things. Thank you, Lord. And, and, and you've got to see the positive in whatever you're going through so that, so that, so that you don't get stuck hallelujah, in depression. You don't get stuck in anxiety. You don't get stuck in fear. You don't get stuck in anger. Hallelujah. And, and that becomes from a positive mind. What you give your thoughts to. What, and you know, when you don't train your mind to think positive, especially in stressful situations, you'll lose sleep. Uh, you'll stop eating. You'll stop praying. You'll stop reading. You see, and nothing good comes from it. You'll just stop doing the things that will build you up. So you've got to recognize these things and, and, and keep your mind focused when opposition comes. Trouble is going to come. Doesn't matter who you are. Problems are going to come. Opposition, you're probably going through some opposition right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I hope you are because uh, there's a reason for me teaching this Bible class um, to help you through your opposition. Hallelujah. So, so we see here. Then the next thing, uh, the brethren, they did not complain. If you're going through opposition, you can't complain. You can't be murmuring. Thank you, Lord. Murmuring and complaining is the same as devil worship. You're giving the devil more power over your life. So, so don't complain. Sing that song. I won't complain. I had some good days. I had some bad days. I had some kills to climb. Thank you, Lord. But, but, but that song is beautiful in the sense that it says, I won't complain. Don't complain. Hallelujah. And that, now, don't complain, but start praising. Don't complain, but start giving God glory. Hallelujah. When you're facing that opposition. Now, I'm, in my, these last 15 minutes, I want to talk about I want to talk about their plan, which is also our plan. When when I'm talking about you got to focus on the plan of God in opposition. Notice what these brethren did. Verse 40, 40. And he says, and they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and had beaten them. And commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus, they let them go. Now, notice verse 41. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer for his name. Verse 42. And daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach. And preach Jesus Christ. Now, that's what they were called to do. Jesus, if we were to go over to Matthew chapter number 28, I want you to go there with me. Matthew chapter 28. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 28. 
Notice, verse 18. Jesus came. This is after Jesus died, rose again. And this scripture here is what we call the Great Commission. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. That's power. Notice what he said. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Verse 20. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. That was the plan that Jesus had for them to do. And that very plan that Jesus had for them to do, they got beat for it. All they were doing was preaching and teaching and healing and doing that which Jesus told them to do. They got beat for it. Opposition came they wear for it. But as you see in verse, uh, what is that, verse 42, after they got beat, after they went through the opposition, they continue with the plan. When opposition comes your way, you don't just throw in the towel and abort the plan that God has for you for your life. You continue on with it. Amen? If God has called me to be a father, yeah, I may have some opposition, some setbacks from being a father, but I don't stop being a father because of my oppositions. God has called you to be a wife. You may have some problems. You may have some issues, that some oppositions to that. But God has called you to be a wife. You don't give up your role and your title from being a wife. God has called you to be married. Amen? You're going to have some oppositions. You're going to have some problems. But notice, in the beginning, God was never so divorced. Hallelujah. God wants families to stay together. I, I may have some problems with my children. I don't kick them out of the house and when they're little children. Thank you, Lord, because we're having some struggle. We're having some fight. We stick with it. We, we go through it. And you know, people have opposition all the time on their job. And, and some people stay on the job 10, 15 years uh, dealing with the opposition. And they, they stay with it. They stay with it, but, but, but people that, that are facing spiritual battles, the enemy comes up against them, they say, oh, it's too hard. I can't make it. I can't do it. They want to throw in the towel. I've had people come to me to say, well, pastor, the reason why I, I left the church is because I was having, uh, I have a harder time in the church than I had in the world. That's deception. That's the enemy. That's the devil. Amen. And we can't allow uh, that kind of thinking to enter into our minds to take us off the plan and the purpose of God. Whatever God has called you to do, you got to make that your focus. Whatever God has put on your plate, hallelujah, you got to make that your focus. Thank you, Lord. And and, and not give up, not throw in the towel because there's some bumps in the road. In other words, you should expect some bumps in the road. You should expect some tests and trials. But in that, you build yourself up so you're able to handle the problem. You're able to handle the situation. So you'll come out pure as gold. Now notice, back to, to what their plan and their purpose was. They were to teach... They were to preach, they were to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's Jesus' name. They did that on the day of Pentecost, Acts 2.38. They understood the revelation of the name of the Father. They understood the revelation of the name of the Son and the Holy Ghost, which is Jesus' name. Anything you do in word and deed, you do it all in the name of Jesus. Notice, verse 20, teaching them to observe all things Whatsoever I command you. 
And notice, if you stick with the plan of God, notice what he says. And lo, I am with you always. Hallelujah. Even until the end of the world. That end of the world means even until the end of the church age. He said, I'm going to be with you. Hallelujah. I'm not going to forsake you. And, and anybody that knows anything, if you want somebody on your side, you want Jesus on your side. And the way to keep Jesus on your side is to keep doing the will of God. Hallelujah. Don't allow the opposition. Don't allow problems, amen, to stop you from moving forward in the will of God. Don't allow this coronavirus to stop you and to keep you out of the house of God. Don't allow this coronavirus to stop you from doing what God has called you to do. It's an abomination. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Don't, don't exalt that above the power of God. Don't exalt anything above the power of God. Because if God be for you, who then can be against you? Hallelujah. My God. Now notice then. Go with me over to, to 2 Corinthians chapter number 10. Hallelujah. My God. I feel the Holy Ghost. A First, 2 Corinthians chapter number 10. We're talking about doing the will of God and how we should handle opposition. Thank you, Lord. Notice what he says. Notice what he says. 2 Corinthians chapter number 10. And he says, verse Number three, he says, for though we walk in the flesh, talking about a natural body, we do not fight after the flesh. Uh, we don't fight in a carnal way. Notice what he says. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but what? Mighty, mighty, mighty through God, through the pulling down of strongholds. So when opposition comes to your mind, to tell, to exalt coronavirus above the will of God, don't allow that to be a fortified opinion to stop you from doing what God has proclaimed you to do. You've been bought with a price. You're not your own. Uh, you're the servant of the Lord. Hallelujah. So notice what he said. Hey, glory. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds. Verse number five, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Hallelujah. You've got to bring every thought that comes to your mind, every oppositional thought that tries to hinder your move, hinder your walk, Hinder your faith in God. You've got to bring that into captivity. Hallelujah. Every imagination, every thought that comes to exalt itself against higher than the throne of God, you've got to cast that down. Notice what he says. Uh, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. My God. Uh, that's a whole other sermon there. Against the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. What God has revealed unto you, the plans and the thoughts that God has for you. Hallelujah. God said, I'm going to be with you. The devil says, he's, he's going to leave you. You say, well, I exalt the knowledge that God cannot lie. So he's going to be with me. Uh, notice, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now notice, verse number six. And having in readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Now, God is ready to fight for you when you obey his word and continue in the plan of God. Like, like, like he did it for those apostles. They were preaching and teaching in the name of Jesus 
They were doing what they were called to do. And when they got into trouble, uh, uh, God sent an angel, hallelujah, to a messenger to get them out of trouble, to set them back on the path called straight. My God, when opposition comes up against you, hallelujah, like the scripture says, that, 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 that God will make a way of escape. Hallelujah, that there's no temptation that has taken us, but such is common to man, but your God is faithful, who won't suffer you to be tempted above what you are tempted, and he'll make a way of escape so that you can be able to bear whatever you're going through. Hallelujah, when you make up your mind, that I'm not going to allow nothing to separate me from the love of God, that I'm going to be the best husband, I'm going to be the best wife, I'm going to be the best servant, I'm going to be the best saint of God, I'm going to be the best pastor, I'm going to be the best usher, I'm going to be whatever God has called me to be, and I'm going to do it with all of my might, I'm going to do it with all of my strength, God will send you help. Hallelujah. God will send you what you need in order for you to be successful. Because if you fail, God fails. And God has never failed. He's never lost the battle. You got to realize that the battle does not belong to you, but the battle belongs unto the Lord. Huh? So I see why he said, be steadfast. Be unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Hallelujah. You've got to go through some opposition resistance. Hallelujah. Resist the opposition. Hey, be steadfast and unmovable. Hallelujah. My God. My last point that I'm going to let you go. Hallelujah, my God. Hallelujah. This is good teaching here. I'm getting excited myself. Hallelujah. Look. Their other mission was, let's go to Acts, chapter number two. <laughs> Hallelujah. Chapter number one, I'm sorry. Chapter number one and verse Number four, and notice he says, and being assembled together with them, here's that command. He commanded them, talking about the apostles, that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which I say ye have heard of me. Truly John baptized with water, yet ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. Then there was, verse 6 says there was a question. And when they therefore came together, they asked him saying, Lord, wilt thou at that time restore again the kingdom of Israel? Notice verse 7. He said, and he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. In other words, don't worry about that. But notice what he told them to worry about. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be what? Witnesses. Amen? Unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and then the other parts of the world. And that's what they should be focused on. Being a witness of the power of Jesus Christ. And when they focused on preaching, when they focused on teaching and baptizing and being a witness, though the opposition was there, when they focused on that, they had great success. They were able to advance the church. People got saved. People got healed. People got delivered. When we focus on being a witness, when we focus on living holy, seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, 
You'll see the church expand. You'll see people get healed. You'll see people get delivered. When you focus on doing the things of God in the midst of your opposition, God will be with you to cause you to be a great success. Hallelujah. He'll send you help. Hey, hallelujah. He'll strengthen your body. When you focus on the things that be of God, he'll, he'll, he'll deliver corona. Hallelujah. From off of you. He'll, you'll be covered under the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. And even if you get attacked in your body by it, if you glorify God, and even if you were to die, you'll die in Jesus, giving him glory. And he said if you uh, seek to save your life, you'll lose it. But if you lose it for his sake, you'll save it. Hallelujah, my God. Hallelujah, my God. Hallelujah. We've got to get focused. That reminds me of Brother Stephen. Thank you, Lord. Stephen was a deacon in the Holy Ghost Church. And he preached Christ. Hallelujah. And he got beat for it. And they asked him, you know, why are you preaching in that name? Acts chapter 7. You can read it yourself. And he went before the council and he started from the very beginning and took them all the way down to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It's a great outline of the plan and the purpose of God. And, and when he got through preaching, huh, they, they started biting on him, huh, gnashing on him. Hallelujah. But, but it, as he was transitioning, the Bible says he saw the heavens open and Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. Jesus will stand up for you. Hey, hallelujah. What a transition. Thank you, Lord. And then, and then he act like Jesus. He said, Father, forgive them. Like Jesus said, they don't know what they're doing. And, 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 and what caused them to have that kind of uh, testimony was because he was focused. What caused them to see Jesus even in his transition? Because he was focused. Uh, he was doing the will of God. Hallelujah. If you're doing the will of God, Everything may not be rosy. Everything may not be easy. But he said he's never brought, he hasn't brought you this far as we sing that song to lead you. So when you're continuing, you got to continue in the face of opposition. You can't give up. Can't throw in the towel. You got to fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on that eternal life. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right, but keep your eye on the prize. Keep your eye on the Lord. Don't allow yourself to go back. Don't allow yourself to go down. Keep your mind focused on Jesus. Amen. So let's give God a praise. I thank God for this Bible study. Hallelujah. I thank God for this word of God. Amen. Truly the word of God is quick and it's powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. So we want to thank God for each and every one of you that has tuned in with us here on today. I hope something was said or done to inspire you, to encourage your heart. I want to encourage um, those that are of Christian ministries and those that want to sow a seed uh, into the ministry to send it to Christian ministries. 501 West 31st Street, Erie, PA, 16508, or go online, do it through Tidely. That's working uh, very well, Tidely, Tidely.com. Thank you, Lord, use that. Find Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church, Erie, PA, and give, or you can bring it and drop it in at our, on our, in our drop box here at, once again, Christian Ministries, 31st, 31st Street, 501 West 31st Street. Amen. And we want you to continue to pray. Pray. Pray not only for us, but pray for men and women and children everywhere. People, this Bible class is timely. This Bible class is needed because we're always 
facing opposition. Trouble on every hand, trouble on every side. Opposition to stop us from advancing the kingdom of God, from doing what God has called us to do. We have to take authority. We have to take authority over our own flesh, over our own thoughts, over the thoughts that the enemy wants to bring our way, and then also over uh, uh, people that want to enslave us. People want to use their power to keep us down. We have to overcome that. Thank you, Lord, and trust in God. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to, to, to come to the sanctuary, the house of the Lord. Don't allow the enemy to put that in your mind. Hallelujah, my God, to keep you away from the house of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's, there's deliverance in the sanctuary. There's, 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 there's power in the sanctuary. What you need to do, wear your mask like you do everywhere else. Wear your mask, do the social distancing. Thank you, Lord. If you're sick, stay home. If you got a fever, stay home. Take care of yourself. Thank you, Lord. But people aren't afraid. They go to the grocery store. They go to the malls. They go to everywhere else. But the enemy want to keep you from coming to the house of the Lord. Don't allow the enemy that stronghold to set in your mind. I come against it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I come against that spirit in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't allow those things to set in your mind. Hallelujah. My God. Don't allow the enemy to dictate to your life. You got to trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. You got to stay steadfast in the Lord. Hallelujah. And be like, be like Esther. If I perish, I perish. I'm going to see the king. Be like Job. If you slay me, yet will I trust in you. Hallelujah. My God. Be saved. Be safe. Amen. But don't allow the enemy to stop you from going to the house of the Lord. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. It ain't so. Thank you, Lord. It's never been so. Thank you, Lord. So I want to encourage you on today. I'm, on, uh, I'm, I'm using my bishopric authority right now. But I want to encourage you today. I want you to keep your mind stayed on Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And we'll come back to you uh, once again on, on, on Sunday at 9.30 for our, our Sunday school, and then also uh, at 11 o'clock for our morning worship. So we praise God for each and every one of you. Pray for Pastor Quinn. Amen. Pray for Christian ministries. Pray for your ministries and your pastors and your leaders throughout this whole world. And keep the faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for this Bible study. We thank you for the anointing. We thank you for the word of God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, and that you'll manifest, that we'll come against all opposition, keep our hearts and our minds focused on your plan and your purpose. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.